A beer consumer. Yes. If you if we we could substitute the hot sauce for a beer if that if that works. I don't have any beer on me. Okay. So we'll <laughs> we'll just do we'll just do a jumping jack hurrah or something. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, while we're waiting for Mike, let's just go ahead and get us started. Ladies and gentlemen, Lila Kings yeah, in the building! Yeah. Thank you. Hell yeah. It's weird that you can't hear the sounds, though. Yeah. Let me see if that does anything. Right there. Anyway, uh, do me a favor, Dylan. Uh, as someone that kind of recently discovered the band... Which you're one, now like one of my favorite bands, by the way. I absolutely oh, love you guys. I've, I deep dive like the whole catalog. Uh, but mm -hmm. Blow This Scene is the one that kind of got me, just grabbed me and just took me for the ride, dude. And uh, uh -huh. if you could just start from the beginning. Tell me about how Lilac King started. I know you guys were on Triumph for, for a while. Um, and yeah. now I think you're kind of independent doing your own thing. But just tell me, start from the beginning. How, how did this all come about? So the band, I was, I was kind of thrown into music um, within like this metal group. So I was in like a metalcore band. Um, and like, I kind of enjoyed post-hardcore a little more than like metalcore. Uh, so I was just kind of writing things on the side. Um, and then eventually um, I started getting better at self-producing. Um, so I was just kind of throwing demos together. Um, and then I met a dude because like I did not know how to, record or edit vocals whatsoever so i met a guy that could do that for me and so i went in and laid some vocals on top of some songs that i had and then came up with the band name um uploaded a song to the internet uh this was back in like 2016 end of 2016 early 2017 um and then i had a couple of friends that were down to play shows with me um and so played a couple shows together you know, the intent wasn't anything permanent on their end. Um, good friends of mine, still good friends of mine. Um, and then I started finding like some more permanent members. Uh, and but then but you, said it, you said it started off as a metalcore project? No. So I was in a metalcore project and I needed an outlet for post hardcore. Okay. For like for that style. Right. And so that's where that came from. Um, and then I got some new members um and they they were along for the ride for a little while um and then they kind of went their separate ways um in their own rights uh caleb came into the band around 2019 he won't be with us today um but he's been a mainstay since then and then our newest member michael who should be joining us soon um is so he joined the band last year and so this this new record we're working on right now with the singles that we're putting out, uh, that's a record with uh, that's the first record with Michael on it. Um, so all the new drums, all the drums you hear on the new songs are from Michael. Um, and yeah, we, we we're technically a three piece now, so everything is super nice and easy and low key and personality wise, everybody gets together really well. Everybody gets along really well and. Uh, does it, does it, does it, I don't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. Does it, does it get, does it get complicated going from a, a, a larger size band to, to a three piece as far as, cause you guys have some technicality and, and progressive stuff yeah. and it gets a little funky yeah. and crazy. Like I imagine it, it's, it took some, some thinking and arranging to become a three piece solidly. Yeah. Well, a lot of it came from modern music. A lot of, you know, modern bands use tracks, use like back tracks live and, so we kind of shake things up. We, you know, I try to do all the cool stuff, the noodly cool guitar stuff myself. Um, so I save the cool parts for myself when I can. And then when it's a section that, you know, I can't, maybe can't nail while I'm singing um, perfectly or I don't know. I, I feel like for the most part, I nail everything that's, you know, wicked, right? Like <laughs> everything that I've written that, that I'm like super proud of, like I'll, I'll, I'll take it. And, and do it live and so the other guitar is backtracks typically um and i feel like if we ever got like a big tour like with like a big band we would probably have 
we have contacts, we have connections to dudes that are like super talented that we would love to have come with us. Um, I don't know if, do you know the band Resilia? Oh yeah, that actually sounds really familiar. Mm-hmm. They, their singer is Daisy from I Met a Yeti. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then their guitarist, uh, John Benoit, is the guy that kind of writes and arranges all the stuff. And we've toured with them and we're good friends with him. I mean, I would try to pull him in or somebody. I mean, we've just got a lot of super talented guitarists that would more be, be more than capable of crushing that out of the park. So we'd probably do that if we had the means of a bigger tour or the like investment to like pay to bring them in, to fly them in and do all that beforehand. Is it if if someone's describing the band and they're like, oh, they kind of sound like to me, you guys sound like a combo of Will Swan only from Dance Gavin Dance meets Harvard and Circa Survive. I love that. You think that's like a fair? I think that's super fair. I I really like all of those musicians. Um, I can't. I would I would be lying if I said that none of them had an influence on me at any point because all of them have. I mean, I literally have a Circa Survive tattoo on my hand. Good for you. Um, I love Anthony Green. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, so like, I mean, between Circa, I mean, so their, their, their music arrangement style has been an influence. And then Anthony's voice more than anything has been an influence on me. Um, well before I knew who dance Gavin dance was, I mean, Juturna just put me on the ground when I was in like sixth grade. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, it, to me, it's the greatest single album ever made is Juturna. It's so good. It takes that me is... on an experience every... I've heard it a thousand times, and it takes me on the ride yeah. every single time over and over again. I completely agree. It's so good. Who Who is the artist when you were when you were yay high that, that made you, you, you... You heard this artist and you said, I want to do that. I want to be a musician. Oh, man. You know, <laughs> that's a tough one. I want to say... Probably Aerosmith. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I've never I seen mean, Aerosmith live, but it's one of my bucket I list have, bands. I haven't necessarily seen them live, but I was exposed to them uh, at a very young age. Um, probably two years old, as far back as two years old. My mom was just a huge Aerosmith fan, and she had, you know, like back in the 90s, the, the super tall, like home stereo systems. Uh, she had one of those and like I just there's memories of me just like cranking that turning it on um yeah I remember wanting to do that a long time ago what's up Mike hey, what's Mike sorry I was just having some problems with teams my bad oh, no worries <laughs> uh I'm the I'm the weird guy that chose teams when everybody else in the world t t chose zoom I was like, oh, well, it's Microsoft and they're they're a really big company and it's, they're going to figure it out. It'll be just as good as Zoom and and it's not. But I paid for it and now I'm just kind of like locked in on it. But uh, Mike, we appreciate yeah. you, man. Thanks. Thanks for hanging. Looks like you got a, sure. a, a nice little collection behind you, too, of some figures and stuff. What you got back there? Oh, yeah. So that's my fiance's. She uh, she loves little statues and she's got some plushies up there as well. That's cool. Hell yeah. Uh, Dylan was just kind of giving me the, the breakdown of, of the band and how they formed. Um, I was telling him that I, I, I'd heard the name Lilac Kings and people are like, oh, you got to check them out, especially being like a Circa Harvard fan myself. Um, and I kind of never really gave you guys a chance. Shame on me. But I heard the uh, Blow the Scene track, the most recent single. And I've probably played it like a hundred times since uh, I've messaged you guys about coming on here. So thank you so much for coming on. That song's incredible. Do me a favor though. Give me give me a breakdown of what we can expect in 2024 from Lilac Kings. I know you said Dylan that there's an album in the works, but is, yes. is there anything you guys are allowed to tell us that we can look forward to? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got a. I mean, I would say at least three more singles before the record drop. I mean, we're really kind of just planning that out and dropping singles for as long as we physically can before the album actually drops. Um, and then, you know, te technically we are still working on it. Uh, we have a couple of tracks to finish up. Um, I will say every big song, I would say at least seven 
of the songs have a feature from someone that we would consider ourselves friends with in within the scene. Um, awesome. We're really stoked on that. There's several people that we tried to get on that were that were unavailable, um, and you know that was all good and well. Um, and we had just a big list of musicians that we really uh, admired that we felt like, you know, were either directly involved in the scene or like very adjacent. But I feel like everyone we've gotten on, Michael, is like pretty like within the scene, like of our genre, don't you think? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I would also say, um, as far as the new stuff, I would say we've got, because I feel like our latest single was, you know, quite a bit more dancey than kind of, um, you know, like Six Set or uh, Sudafed Sundays, whereas Sudafed was kind of more somber. I feel like we've got that kind of diversity coming up with the next stuff that I feel like people will really vibe with. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a lot of different, a lot of different emotions going on there, a lot of different, you know, sort of vibes. Yes. Yeah. Mike, tell me, tell me that you read the message about the hot sauce and you're about to save the day. That you have some hot sauce ready to go. My man, let's, let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I like Just to do. I've, I, I've, I'm probably nearing somewhere in the realm of a thousand interviews, and one of the things I like to do is is do a trivia portion. The cool thing about the trivia portion is you guys get to pick the trivia topic. So the 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 advantage is in your corner. But if I stump you. You got to take a swig of hot sauce. Don't worry, Mike. Whether you get it right or wrong, I'm doing hot sauce too. Um, and depending on, and you, was it just you, was it just Tabasco or Tapatio that you held up? Um, yeah, Tapatio. Okay, okay. Because if you had brought some ghost pepper, I'd go back and grab some of the hotter stuff behind me back here. But I need to know if you guys could agree on a movie or TV show that you've seen the most. A movie or a TV show. One or the other. Tell me what the name of the movie or TV show is. I'm going to look up trivia while I ask you questions um, in the background. And then I'm going to rattle off one or two questions. My goal is to stump you. Uh, Dylan, you want to do One Piece? (laughs) Dude, I'm only like halfway through it. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's not do that. I'm about 700 episodes shy of finishing it. (laughs) In my opinion, picking a movie is a lot easier because it's, you know, a two hour yeah, film versus sure. 700 yeah. episode show. <laughs> Dude. Uh, a movie. I don't know. What do you think? Anything come to mind? Y- for me personally, yes. Because I'm, I'm a big Star Trek fan. I've watched all of them like a hundred times. Even the old, old yeah. ones or just the newer ones? You think I should do what? Titanic? I don't know about Titanic. <laughs> that was my fiance's. So she can she can help in the background if you want to go Titanic. I don't know, Mike. Yeah. Last time you've watched Titanic, it's been about ten years. But <laughs> I'll take my best shot if that's I what don't you know, want. Man. To do. I don't. I don't. I mean, we could do. I don't. I don't really know Star Trek, but we could do Star Wars as well if you know any of that. I know some Star Wars, okay. but I don't feel like. These are going to be I brutally know. hard, by the way, so just be prepared. Trivia-wise, I think I'm going to fail pretty yeah. hard. Um, I also need something to, like, swig. They're swigging hot sauce. I don't want to do the old coffee. That actually might hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so, we go, so we go Star Trek or, or Titanic? Michael. So I don't really know anything about Star Trek. So <laughs> I would say Titanic in that. Oh, I know man. a little bit about it. We got two votes Titanic. I'm going to look up Titanic. If you want to switch topics to the second one, that's okay. Okay. So <laughs> give me give me a second to look up some Titanic trivia. We're counting on your fi- fiancé to come through on this one. But uh, while while I'm looking up trivia, it's going to take me a second. Um, okay. Tell me, tell me if do you guys have any unusual pre-show rituals? Or Dylan, do you have anything that, uh, that you guys do before going on on stage and then after the show is over is there anything that you guys always do just to prepare for the next day yeah so i want to give i'll tell you michael's pre-show ritual or pre-tour ritual is forgetting something very important absolutely yeah (laughs) 
what was the the first time it was the kick pedals we made it all the way to amarillo <laughs> you were like yeah without my pedals like well you gotta hit up guitar center and then the next time it was uh your your tom legs <laughs> uh, we were what i will tell you a during show ritual it's um caleb wondering which song is going to be played and so i just give him little hand signals like drive me home or like just fun stuff <laughs> yeah let's, let's play drive true. next let's play drive next yeah <laughs> it's pretty that is pretty funny i've caught that a few times um which one yeah, which, think... what song in your set is the most exciting for the band to play like even if it's an old tune that kind of gets worked in the set every now and then what, maybe, what? maybe? I would say six set, bro. Six set, six set's fun. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Cause we do. Uh... Oh my gosh, what is that song even called? What is the? Hang on, blinding uh, weekend. Oh yeah, blinding lights. Blinding lights. Is it just called blinding lights? Yeah. So yeah. six set, bro. We play it, and then when we get to the end of the song, we like transition it into blinding lights chorus. And so we just like do a post hardcore throwdown of blinding lights. That's cool. I bet the fans get get all rowdy during that part and start singing and stuff. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's fun. Gentlemen, pre be prepared to be stumped. Fiance in the background. I'm counting on you. Here we go. In the movie Titanic, there's a scene where Rose says, "Hey, tell Ruth that she is going to get a blank if she keeps worrying about Jack." What is she going to get if she keeps worrying about Jack? This scene happens while they are lacing Rose's bow dice. I don't even know what that word is. Bow dice? They're lacing Rose's bow dice. And Rose tells Ruth she is going to get a blank if she keeps worrying about Jack. Do you not know? You don't know that one? Do you know Michael? Like a headache or migraine or something? This is incorrect. Enjoy the hot sauce, boys. <laughs> the answer is a nosebleed. I'm going to do it with you. Don't worry. I was thinking black eye, but. Are you getting a black eye? If you keep worrying about that would be someone, the someone's going to punch Rose? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where where have you. Much. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, Dill. No, you're fine. Go ahead. I was going to say, um, where where in the world, if if hypothetically that, that dream tour comes along, you're opening or bands that you love or you're, they're opening for you, where where in the world do you want to play more than anywhere? What country and or city or venue? Oh, geez. I don't think I've even dreamed that far ahead, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, so, Australia would be awesome for me. I'd just love to see it out there. Cool. Yeah. Hell yeah, Let's, Australia would be well, awesome. What, what about what about where's where's the farthest you guys have gone? Um, probably probably California, probably Fresno or L.A. Hopefully yeah, in twenty in, in twenty twenty four we get you guys over here to to L.A. area so I can catch a gig or two. Please, yes, please yes. do that for me. If I if and I look then, up the yeah. Wrath of Khan. As the second trivia question, you got this one, right, Dylan? Oh, yeah, surely. I think I can figure that one out. Okay, so I'm going to look up another one. Do you guys have any any uh, any phobias? Anything that freaks you out, scares you, heights, spiders, anything like that? Heights can sometimes get me. I mean, if it's, if it's like 20 feet or something, it's not bad. But if you're up on like a mountain, like looking down, I mean, there it gets to a point. Yeah, I, I don't like heights personally. I we actually got in the, you know, the glass box on top of the Willis Tower in Chicago. Have you seen that before? Uh. -uh. There's like a glass box that you walk out into, and it's see through on the bottom. It's on the top floor of the tallest building in Chicago, and we got in it today, and that was pretty scary. I'm not gonna lie. So like it was uh, like your feet up. just you see straight <laughs> down from your feet. Yeah. Oh no, I don't like that. It's pretty nerve wracking. I mean, they were taking our picture, and the guy was like, "Just back into it and don't look down." <laughs> Dylan, I think you got this one in Star Trek: The Wrath of Khan Part One. 
The Wrath of Khan Part 1. There's a part in the movie where Spock gives Kirk a book as a birthday present. Can you tell me the name of the book or the author who wrote that book? Kirk, I don't know. It says Kirk, I'll give you a hint. It says Kirk recites both the first and last lines of the book before the film is over. Oh man. I'm ashamed. I don't know this one. Well, fellas, it looks like we're two for two in the stumps. <laughs> All right, Michael. Take one for the team, brother. I got you one more time. Don't worry. Hell yeah. Oh, man. Do you guys up? Uh... Hot in 4K. Woo! Yeah, what is, what is the answer? The answer is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, which I think is the... the... Like the it was a it was a something something it was a I forget the first line of that book but it has like a very famous first line it was the best of times worst best of times, times it was the worst of times yeah maybe he That's says it. that in the movie mm -hmm. I I don't yeah. recall but uh do you guys have any odd collectibles or hobbies that you do when when it's not music time I I have I, one yeah. very distinct one which is. Um, I collect Zelda merchandise, so I have like every Zelda game, a ton of the amiibos. Just like I don't know. Do you have any Zelda ink? Any Zelda ink or anything? Kid. No, nothing yet. I would like to get something. You gotta get the Triforce, bro. I yeah. <laughs> I actually have Zelda ink. Show off some. Show off something that you got. Um, so I want to see your circa tattoo, if possible. Also, I've got the wind fish. Okay. You can see that. Yeah. You know, uh, hang on, that's tough. Okay. Uh, see the whale? Hell yeah. Yeah, so from um, Link's Awakening, and then the circuit tattoo is... Oh yeah, I see it. Yeah. So that's like a... Yep. Is that like a cross cover-up over something else, kind of? No, yeah, it's like a... So that's the circuit logo, and mm -hmm. then it's just a rose. So like it's mm -hmm. all implemented. So like it's like red on the insides, and then gray on the outsides. That's cool, hell yeah. And yeah, Michael, you need to get a wind fish, dude. I actually have two. Wind yeah, um, matching wind fish. Yeah, that'd be tight. Um, weird collectibles for me is actually Star Trek related. I collect uh, diecast starship models. So like cool. I, I probably got like maybe those are like the buildable lake, or they come already built. They're already together. Um, they're like a mix match of like metal and plastic and stuff. Um, they're pretty cool. Um, yeah, if I was home, I would definitely be showing them off right now with lots of pride. Make up for my lost pride of not knowing the ref con trivia. Mike, I asked Dylan the same question, but I want to know your answer. Who who was your musician inspiration years back when you're way younger that made you just want to become a musician in general? So I started off um, a little all over the place, but really when it came down to it, I mean, my first like main instrument was, you know, drums. And back in the day, I loved pop punk. So like Travis Barker, which was a huge influence on, you know, me and my style. Um, so I, I would probably have to go with Travis Barker. Good answer. Man's man's yep. a genius. He's a god. He's a legend. Uh, if, if if someone's watching the show right now or sees this interview on YouTube tomorrow morning and uh, they want to do what you guys do, they want to create that kind of music. I'm, I'm assuming that at some point in your career, Dylan, I know, Mike, you haven't been in the band as long, but Dylan, maybe there was a mistake or two Lilac made that you would be like, oh, don't we did this early in our career. Don't do that. What is that mistake that you tell someone just so they don't do that same thing? Oh my gosh. It's tough to say. I think a lot of bands are like individual people. Um, of the, I mean, they are. Their bands are a group of individual people with individual and shared relationships. And I think every band works completely differently. Um, so like one band's mistake could possibly be what does it for the next band. Um, because like, you know, as many, like I can say don't sign a record deal because a record deal kind of, you know, 
we've had good record deals, we've had bad record deals. And so it's like tough to say, you know, don't do this or that. Um, I will say the best advice I could give anybody that wants to tour is to bring wipies. That's good advice. Yeah. Gotta love it. For me, uh, my biggest problem has been making music and then sitting on it. Just like I'll I'll have stuff that I'll even record myself, um, come up with. And then I just don't release it because I, you know, I'm either too much of a perfectionist or um, I feel like it could just be better or I could do something to make it better. And I, I've just gotten to such a point recently where it's like complete the thought. It's like finish it, you know, get done with it. And then, you know, if it's if it's good, if it's to your standards, put it out. If it's not, move on to something, you know, something else, something better instead of just focusing and fixating on like one thing and i feel like it's helped my songwriting and just my perception of music too because it allows me to sort of you know go from thing to thing and, and really just work out those small that's that's a really good answer because actually i've done that i i would say i'm pretty good at like writing something until i realize that it's not going anywhere and then leaving it but, you know obviously yeah. i'll keep it like in 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 a in a drawer somewhere right figuratively um and we did that. We did that with Street of Fed Sundays. That song was benched. And then, you know, a year and a half later, Mike comes into the band and, you know, we're looking at songs to do, have a feature on or whatever. We were kind of thinking about maybe just having it as a one-off single. And then we sent it to Mike. He wrote drums over it. And then I ended up changing a lot of the song around what he did, which like honestly like connected the dots. And then it, it really, that was kind of our first, that was our first writing experience together. And it yeah. just solidified, not only did the song come together pretty effortlessly, it solidified our entire writing style as a band, like as a new band, basically, right? As a new group of guys that hadn't necessarily written together. Um, so that was cool. I did think of something, though. I think a good amount of advice for somebody that's starting it is to, like a mistake that I've made, do not fixate on what you determine as success or fixate on the numbers you know it's so hard not to compare yourself to everybody else especially with spotify releasing the like year-end raps and you're like seeing all the stream numbers and like how many people have listened to your band and you know all all that stuff like just exist in the music that you make and then be happy with that um and don't obsess over, I guess, just don't obsess over the number. I feel like that gets you into, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's cool and you can be excited about it, but, you know, what happens whenever you've gotten to that peak of excitement and then the next year your number's dropped? You know, it's, it's if you're too obsessed with it, you're going to, your soul's going to be crushed, right? You're like, oh, I mean, people aren't really vibing with us anymore, which isn't true necessarily. A lot of times numbers are inaccurate. Um, and then even if they are, so what? You know, you're doing this, you're making this music um, because you felt the need to make it for yourself, right? In the first place. Totally. Everyone has a worst show ever. Since Mike has joined the band, when is what is the worst show that you guys played? Everything went wrong. How do you, <laughs> how do you prevent this from happening again? I know the one for me. <laughs> oh, dude, which one? I had my right kick pedal go out. And I, honestly, as far as a full show, like everyone playing, it wasn't too bad. Like but it, for it, me, it, it broke though. Right, like, yeah, the... yeah, right kick pedal. So I had to switch over because I use a double pedal. You know, typically I have my right and left that can play bass drum. My left can switch to a hi hat. I had to like turn around and play sideways. Uh, with both my feet off to the left, just to just to finish out the the song that we were doing, and it was like this massive because a little spring just came off. It was something I could fix, you know, relatively easy. But it's hard to do was, in the middle uh, of a gig. I get it. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you're like, hold on a second. Just, I anyone got pliers? Was <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Hell yeah. Uh, That's let's see. My favorite show. For sure. Oh, what were you gonna say, Dylan? You were gonna say the same thing, or what? What something that went wrong for you? 
No, I was just saying that was my favorite show. I thought that was the best one. <laughs> <laughs> you got the entertainment value. <laughs> yeah, well, after turning around and thinking, like, is this, a, is this like an act? Like, is this something cool that drummers <laughs> do? Like, um, I don't know. I think, for me, it was probably a show we played fairly recently. I'd gotten sick and lost my voice, and I had to, like, sing through it. And, you know, I was just, like, hard on myself over it. But, um. We played it anyways. People liked it somehow. I think, honest, honestly, it's because Mike and Caleb were crushing at that show. Do you have any any interesting vocal warm up things that you do? Um, kind of. Yeah, I, it's just kind of like the stereotypical vocal warm ups that you kind of just see on on YouTube. You look up vocal warm ups and you just kind of run the scales in different with different sounds like e's and nays and um and that's pretty much it I just going from that. like a low a low run to a like just like a low key like a little run in a low key and then just hitting every key higher 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 and then uh switching switching the sound you're making because you get pretty high up there man so let's just say you're in you're in the tour van the bus or something and, and you can't hit that that ah, way up there or something do you uh, have like a tea remedy or anything like that? that you, like a vocal mist, anything you do to, to break the barrier? Yeah, so um, I have been sick or coming off of being sick. Rather, uh, my voice has been tired um, from being sick or kind of missing, I guess, um, while I've been on tour. And so like that's been the case. Um, and I always have that like, um, what do you call it? Like a vaporizer or vapor mask i think they have those like portable ones that go right over your face um and so you know we'll be at the venue and you'll find me in a corner plugged in with a mask on my face and i'll do that all the way up until people hey um yeah <laughs> is he all right is he is he gonna be able to play yeah he's fine he's fine he's fine he's just getting oxygen man. <laughs> getting oxygen, man. hell yeah uh we'll just do a couple more questions and i'll let you guys go and i appreciate your time Let's yeah, say, let's say hypothetically, sure. uh, like louder than life or, or welcome to Rockville or something like that. You guys, you guys are thrown on and there's 20,000 people. We'll just, I don't know if that's the best show ever, but let's just pretend that that's the best show you guys ever did size, mm -hmm. size wise. It's time to party. The, sh the set went perfect. It's time to party. What is your go-to much? Like there's, there's beers and, and shots going on backstage. What's the munchy meal, the go-to munchy meal after this most amazing set? Man. Mozzarella sticks. So, mozzarella yeah. sticks, okay. <laughs> well, for sure, mozzarella sticks. Yeah. Or I was thinking like fried raviolis, something something like that. Yeah. Some along those lines. I, I saw the yeah. other but day. If it's, it's like, it's... if it's like snack, snack munchy meal, then for sure some cashews. Dude, well, I will I will eat some cashews. At, at, at a gig that big, they'd probably cater you guys and, and you know, take care yeah. of you, whatever. But but yeah. I, I saw something on YouTube the other day where there's a place in Vegas that has, like, one mozzarella stick this big. It's just one. You only get one. And it's, like, a whole wedge of, of mozzarella cheese. I want to go there, dude, and, and just... I'll take it. I want to try I'll that. Take it. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about because I saw that and I watched him make it, put that giant block of cheese in it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, dude. I gotta try that. I gotta try it. I can only do yeah. one though. There's just too much cheese to go beyond the one. But it's a lot. Is there? It's is probably there... a pound. Yeah, it's, it's gotta be. <laughs> it seems like it's like thirty nine ninety nine for one stick. But uh, is yeah. there is there anything that you guys want to plug or promote and and just and just chat about that we maybe didn't touch base on? Um, what do you think, Michael? I mean, really, our our biggest thing here recently has been the new single dropping. Um, you know, it's out on all platforms. I think it's time we blow this scene. Um, you got anything? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. Just uh, take a listen to the song if you like it, share it. Uh, we're a pretty small band, so any kind of uh, interaction if you like it and you see a post about it just comment something literally just be like hell yeah brother <laughs> you know, what, hell what yeah, a, brother. share it on a story follow the band on socials i mean we're just trying to 
and we're pretty good at connecting and, and commenting back and sharing stuff that we're tagged in so um if it's your if it's your vibe and you want to um interact with the band we're here to do that with i, I love the fact that you guys I, occasionally have like interesting crazy song titles how do the yeah. song titles come about and are they always related to to the music that we're hearing or is it just let's just come up with a cool funky crazy title um <laughs> it's definitely been kind of a theme with this new record for sure i think uh it's time we blow the scene is um it's a quote off of the intro song tank uh for the anime cowboy bebop uh, and then, like, the first section of the song, the intro of the song is, like, our rendition of the beginning of that actual song uh, in the intro for Cowboy Bebop. Um, but, yeah, like, that's actually relevant to the song because the song is kind of about um, just, you know, breaking out of a toxic environment or um, something that's just not conducive for your, like, ability to thrive artistically or in any way, really. I mean, we wrote it as from like that artistic perspective, but I mean, it could really, it could be from any perspective. Um, six set bros, similar kind of thing. You know, there's, we've had a lot of people come up to us after shows that were like six set bro that actually did not mean it. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to be kind and, and get an autograph or something. I imagine. <laughs> Maybe. Hell yeah. Well, Java, this was a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys. Again, the, uh, I think it's time to blow the scene was the first song I ever heard from you. I probably played it a hundred times since then. It's, cool. it's caused me to go to your Spotify and kind of deep dive your catalog. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to be telling friends and family about you guys just because I love what you do. Dylan, we Thank discussed you. it. I'm a diehard Circa fan. And, and when I heard yeah. the song, I got those vibes. I got the Will Swan Harvard yeah. Circa vibes and that's totally up my alley. So please mm -hmm. don't change. Keep doing your thing. I'm excited <laughs> to hear the record. And you said the seven features. I believe we have like seven right now. Um, yeah, there's there's some good ones coming. I I don't know. I feel like you know we don't have a record label. We could probably just name drop somebody. Yeah. Do you, you want to do, do it, Mike? Do it. Do it. So sure. <laughs> uh, probably the next single. I don't know this for sure if it's the next single that's coming out. I think it is. Uh, the next single will have Andy Sizik from. Uh, Monuments and Macari and it's our good buddy, Wander. Yeah, from Monuments and uh, he was in like twenty seven bands, but yeah, yeah, he's he's yeah, the so that's gonna be a banger. That's gonna he's be a banger. Coming. Yeah, I see chat already going. Yes, oh yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool. Well, gentlemen, again, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking some time uh, of doing that. Is there is there uh, a rough? This is the last question. Is there a rough timetable we can expect? the album to come out i would well, say um, maybe summertime probably summertime summertime yeah. do you think you're gonna go independent or you think you're gonna shop it to and then and then drop it um well i mean we've been doing these single releases independently um it's got its pros and cons for sure um you know we have a few i mean i say we have a few i mean we really just kind of have interest from one uh label that we have worked with in the past so we may shop around a little bit kind of see what interest is there and we may we may or may not drop it independent or just leaf in a win man we uh we've been taken taken care of in the past by labels and we've been let down pretty hard by labels in the past so you know it's it's a little bit of a crapshoot so we'll see yeah it's gotta be the perfect fit i totally get it yeah yeah Mike, Dylan, you guys are amazing. So I'm sorry. Which, on. I cut you off. I'm sorry. What did you say, Mike? Oh, oh, um, yeah, no, I was just saying thank you so much, by the way, for having us on. You know, uh, we're grateful to be here. Yes, absolutely. It's my pleasure. And, and it's it's easy when when the band's badass and the, the music just comes naturally. And that's what you guys thank do, you. man. It's, it's absolute fire. Yeah. Gentlemen, enjoy yeah. the rest of your day. Happy holidays. Congratulations, you, Dylan, well. on the engagement. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Just uh, keep doing your thing, fellas. I appreciate you spending some time. I'm going to put this on YouTube tomorrow, and I'll send you the link later tonight. All, all that fun stuff. Sounds good. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Lila Kings! Hell yeah! <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Cheers, Thank fellas. You. I appreciate it. All right.